Portugal crashed out of the Euro 2024 quarterfinals on penalties against France. Looking at that on paper without any context, that would be a fairly respectable end to their tournament given the stage they made it to, their opponent, and the nature of their loss being in a shootout. However, this is not the France we've been used to seeing. And that marked three consecutive matches where Portugal didn't score a single goal. And for about the third tournament running, maybe more, but at least three, Portugal has entered with everyone saying, wow, such a talented squad, they could really win it if everything clicks. And when they exit, they say, wow, such a talented squad, what a waste due to weak management from the top. This weak management leads to uninspired tactics to cater a certain legend of football, despite that legend not scoring an open play from nine major tournament matches now. Now, I gotta say this from the top, my ideal scenario would be that Ronaldo doesn't retire from the national team. He still has a lot of value if he can accept a different role and if he isn't a guaranteed starter. I mean, he has shown in qualifying that up against a certain level of opposition, he can still score goals. So why not bring him along for those? There could be far more good that outweighs the bad, but thanks to weak management that is too scared of benching him, we see the same tactics, the same failings over and over. I feel like I shouldn't have to do this, but I've got to preface this for the people who will try to derail this conversation and call it Ronaldo hate, call me ungrateful, what have you. Nobody is trying to dispute Ronaldo's legacy. For me, he's one of the greatest to ever do it. One of the most elite professionals across all of sport, not just football, but all of sport. Portugal crashing out just isn't on Ronaldo. It would be crazy to argue that. There is a manager above him who can make decisions autonomously, but chooses not to. And anyone who brings up Messi and tries to turn this into a Ronaldo versus Messi debate, please grow up. <laughs> We're begging you. You're putting us to sleep and trying to kill any kind of intelligent conversation around this subject. This has to do with Portugal here. And in this section, we're talking about Ronaldo and his effect because he has a great effect on the team, both good and bad. I think every Portuguese person and the sons and daughters of Portuguese people, such as myself, are indebted to Ronaldo for how he inspired a generation of players that he now shares the pitch with and how he elevated Portuguese football to heights it had never seen before. Nobody can take that away from Ronaldo. The ink is dry on that part of history. Also, as mentioned, Ronaldo doesn't have to retire from the national team in order for Portugal to reach their potential. That's not a requirement should he accept some time on the bench. He wouldn't even have to spend every match on the bench. Hell, he can still start some matches for Portugal. It's not all or nothing here. There's a middle path. But that said, these are the facts we are dealing with at the moment. This is the new reality. As mentioned, no goals in major tournaments in nine appearances now, failing to score at a major tournament for the first time in his career. After five matches, he had 22 shots, the most in the tournament, and the second highest expected goals in the tournament behind only Havertz, who scored twice. The last time he scored in a major tournament was a penalty against Ghana in Portugal's first World Cup match back in Qatar in 2022. Let's talk rankings here. Rankings are kind of silly, they shouldn't be used as, you know, be all end all, but they do help to give you a guide or an idea of the kind of level of opposition you're playing against, right? Ghana were ranked 61st in the world at the time when Ronaldo scored against them. Ronaldo scored 10 goals in Portugal's recent qualifying matches, the highest ranked nation in that group being Slovakia, who were ranked 50th in the world at the time Ronaldo scored against them in October of 2023. His other goals were against Liechtenstein, Luxembourg, Iceland, and Bosnia and Herzegovina. Bosnia were the highest ranked of all of them at the time, sitting in 63rd when Ronaldo scored against them, second to Slovakia. The last time he scored against a top-ranked nation was in the Nations League in June of 2022, when he scored a brace against Switzerland, who were ranked 14th. That brace came in the middle of a 14-match stretch where Ronaldo scored in just two appearances for Portugal. Three goals and three assists in 14 appearances. They were definitely playing against better opposition, especially in the Nations League. He now plays in a league that is far from top football. Those who try to quantify the level of the SPL, the Saudi Pro League, such as analytics wizards Opta, have placed it at 26th in the world around the level of the Cypriot League. 
That may sound shocking, but it's a top-heavy league. Al Hilal, Al Nasser, Al Itihad, and Al Ali are all strong clubs and have strong internationally renowned players. Go beyond that, and the rest of the clubs would be considered below average in MLS. Almost half of the clubs would be worse than the worst teams in MLS, as you can see from this graphic from Opta. Combine this with his goals record for Portugal, in that he only scores against teams ranked 50th and lower in the world, and it makes you wonder how much longer Portugal would start him when he A, isn't playing against top, top professionals most of the time anymore in Saudi Arabia, and B, he isn't scoring against top nations for Portugal anymore, and C, he's 39 and doesn't possess one of the main things that separated him from the rest of the field in his prime, his speed, strength, and aerial ability. And by aerial ability, I mean his actual ability to jump like he used to, not his heading accuracy. Trust me, I've been watching him for 20 years now, and the fall off in the last, I'd say two to three, has been drastic. Of course, there was that little fall off after his knee injury. It held him back a little bit. It made it more difficult for him to hit his free kicks, what have you, but the fall off in the last two, three years has been the most drastic, and that should be obvious. He's 39 now. And so that's the new reality for Ronaldo. No bias, just numbers when it comes to the competition he's playing against and scoring against. And when you couple that with the tactical side of things for Portugal, well... Now, given goals are such an issue for Portugal, or were in this tournament, I'm going to talk about their attack for a bit here. And let's try to look at this without bias once again. Let's look at this as how the team functions as a whole. Look at the sport as a team game again, rather than wanting your favorite player to do well. When I say Ronaldo, just hear me as saying the striker, if that makes it easier for you. You know, in my preview slash prediction video, I had a feeling that Portugal would actually do pretty well against this French team. And they did when it came to everything but scoring goals. They were the team for most of the match, until Dembele came on, that had most of the attacking impetus. They carved out better opportunities that French defenders had to block or Magnan had to save, or the Portuguese would just put wider over the bar. <laughs> now, there were a couple of comments on my review of the Portugal-Slovenia match saying that Portugal played well and that I must not have ever played against a low block before in my life. <laughs> I have. I played for years since I was five years old. And given my team was like, not always the top team, we were kind of like, uh, like the Liverpool of the league. Strong side, would win the league now and then, would majorly slump in big games, <laughs> but the other top side dominated. But given we were good, we often played against low blocks. And if our striker was constantly standing on the opposite side of the pitch than the ball between two defenders, demanding balls to be whipped into the box instead of dropping deeper to combine with the other players around him and simultaneously pull opposing defenders out of their shape, out of position, I would freak out. We as a team would freak out. And instead of playing wasted balls into the area that the defenders would clean up, we would demand our striker to join us, play with us, instead of demanding the whole squad to simply serve him. And this isn't just on Ronaldo, it's on Martinez as well for his selections. And what I would assume, we don't know for sure, but I would assume encouraging the players to pump balls in. And pumping balls into the box isn't hyperbole. Portugal crossed more than any other team in Euro 2024 has thus far. According to OptiStats, Portugal crossed 154 times, 33 more than second place Germany. Of the teams that are left in the competition, as they have a maximum of two matches remaining, based on how many times they have crossed thus far in the tournament, Portugal are still set to remain as the team with the most crosses in Euro 2024, despite playing two matches fewer than any of the remaining nations. Ronaldo doesn't force his teammates to cross, but his influence and actions of screaming at them and throwing his arms in the air when they don't cross plays a big role. When you're constantly trying to just demand crosses into the box as he does, you are playing one way. You make life so, so easy for the defenders because they know exactly where the danger in major quotations is going to come from. You are making defending relatively predictable, just as Portugal did for Georgia, Slovenia, and just as they did against France as well. Every single time, like I said in the preview of Portugal versus France match, it's Portugal passing the ball around as the opponent sets up their block. If the wide man doesn't fancy taking on the defender one-on-one -on -one to get to the touchline, they pass it back to the fullback, maybe the midfielder, back to the flank, and then pump it in toward Ronaldo at the back post, where the defender clears it away. 
unfortunately, and I know some people will take this as a slur or something, but take this as at face value again without bias. Unfortunately, Ronaldo is 39. I know, I know, an insane, hateful thing to say. <laughs> but the man is 39 and doesn't have the physical advantage over defenders that he used to. And while he's in incredible shape for his age, he doesn't have those attributes anymore that separated him from the rest of his peers when he was in his prime. He doesn't have that spring anymore to jump way into the air and win a difficult header only he could win. That's why he only won 14 duels in this tournament and lost 28 of them. Unfortunately, again, this is just an objective fact and is not a slur. Unfortunately, he doesn't have the acceleration in his first few yards in order to get distance between himself and the defender to beat them to the ball. That was another thing that separated, pun intended, Ronaldo from the rest of the crowd when he was in his prime and isn't there anymore simply because time has caught up to him. Surely even Ronaldo's most fierce defenders who watch him so closely would have noticed that whenever Portugal's wide men would break toward the touchline and look to play a ball through the six yard box, as happened against France, Ronaldo would often pull back and linger near the penalty spot behind the defenders instead of attacking the six yard box as he used to. Is that a choice or is that because he doesn't have the acceleration anymore? Plenty of balls went untouched through the six in this tournament. That's just not good. Again. Look at those crossing numbers. Not good. It's just a shame, man. Like I was saying about demanding a player to play with the team rather than demand that he is served by the team. I mean, Ronaldo was great in the first two matches against Czechia and Turkey in this tournament. He was playing for the team. He was of service to his teammates. It was a give and take with them. And then it felt like the anxiety of not getting a goal in the first two matches came up and he was played against Georgia despite most of the rest of the starters being rested probably so he could get that goal that he wanted, so he could get that record of scoring in every Euro since 2004. But I do hope Ronaldo is doing okay mentally because he seems like he's struggling a bit. The breakdown during the match against Slovenia was surreal from him, never seen that before, especially from a guy who was such a mentality monster most of the time. How he was freaking out after every miss against Slovenia and Georgia as well. The breakdown he had when Al Nasser lost the King's Cup to Al Hilal recently. He seems like a guy who is wrestling with his time at the top being over. Nine matches without a goal in major tournaments is not the Ronaldo we knew so well, leading the tournament in expected goals but scoring zero. It sucks. I feel for the guy on a human level as I can't imagine, and I'll never know, what that kind of drop feels like. But. His legacy is going to be incredibly hard to top. He has a European championship under his belt and he bows out with the most goals and assists at this tournament. So absolutely, he should hold his head high for what he's accomplished in his career. I hope that he looks back on that, even though it stings right now. Portugal is supremely talented. When you look at this list of players, I'm sure there are a few that you would love to have at your club. I'm not saying they are the best players in the world at their position. <laughs> Some are probably in your top five for a given position. Hell, if they're even in your top 20, that's pretty damn good in my books. But you also don't need to be in the top 20 or 30 to be effective in international football. We have seen so many examples of this through the years, right? And so in the striker position in particular, anyone who says that Portugal wouldn't be any better with Gonzalo Ramos out there are forgetting the impact he had against Switzerland in the 2022 World Cup. A hat trick in his first start of the tournament despite playing just two minutes against Ghana, eight minutes against Uruguay, and he was benched against South Korea. He's not in his best form, but it's not like he plays in the Cypriot League. Sorry, couldn't help myself there. But the point is, if he is never given a chance, how can he ever rectify that? Is the answer to then just ice him out until Ronaldo retires? Never change Ronaldo when Portugal needs a goal and they have a striker sitting on the bench? I don't think that's fair at all. I don't think that's smart at all. And you are cutting out the possibility of improvements to the team. You can keep doing the same thing and hope that Ronaldo changes, or you can be proactive as Martinez and change the team now and then, not every match, but now and then. Ronaldo's record is still good in the qualifiers against less skilled opponents. No issue with him taking on those matches, as is befitting of someone who is turning 40 next year and whose record against top teams is slipping at a drastic rate. But if guys like Gonzalo or whomever are never given a chance, you're robbing yourself of stories such as what Gonzalo achieved against Switzerland at the World Cup, a hat trick. If players aren't ever given the chance, these narratives will never play out. 
Speaking of not letting other branching storylines or avenues play out, another thing is the whole free kick debacle. To his credit, he allowed Bruno to take one against France. Bruno's not even that good at free kicks, should have been Bernardo. But Ronaldo took the other one from a fairly difficult angle for a right-footed player. That failed attempt into the wall took his tally up to one scored from 61 free kicks in major international tournaments. Zero for over 30 in the Euros. And the crazy thing is, is that when it comes to his record in Euros knockout matches, he has scored three goals from 93 attempts. How has he scored them? With his head. He never kicked a ball into the goal in a knockout round from open play. I can almost guarantee you that if he had allowed other people to take a free kick, to whip them in for him, his goals record would be even better than it already is. He would extend his goals record even further at European Championships, especially when he is telling his teammates to go away in situations like this one. I can guarantee the probability of him scoring from this free kick is lower than him getting on the end of a cross. So it just seems like he is getting in his own way that adding some more goals is getting in his own way. And one more time, he doesn't need to leave the team entirely. He can still be a useful asset to Martinez and the rest of the squad, who probably want him there also. Ronaldo would be a fantastic mentor, almost like a player coach sort of role to have in this team. A guy who comes off of the bench for the last 20 minutes with fresh legs against tired defenders, providing a different sort of option for Portugal. Then they can start whipping balls into the box instead of what they were previously doing, which was keeping the ball on the ground, as they have done when they play without Ronaldo. Having him come off the bench, great. Having him play against weaker opponents and qualifying or what have you, great. No issue with that. And again, the younger players, would love to have him around. So we're not saying retire here, but we are saying that Portugal has choices now after going three consecutive matches where they didn't score a single goal, the final two in which they had a much higher expected goals than their opponents, but couldn't finish and many crosses and balls went through the box unmet due to a lack of presence from a Portuguese striker. So Martinez, what do you do next? What's your move? continue with the same tactics that only worked against teams that were ranked 50th and lower from qualification and sporadically against Turkey and Czechia when they self-sabotage, <laughs> or have an uncomfortable conversation for the good of the Portuguese national team. And your own legacy. For me, the answer is clear, but I'd love to hear what you guys think on this. So sound off and thanks for watching. Ciao.